Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you how to do a better YouTube embed. And rather than tell you, I'm just going to show you. I've got the network tab pulled up here and then I've gone ahead and just grabbed the iframe from my last video I did. And I'm going to save this and I want you to just watch the network tab load over this way. So look, it's still pulling in stuff and we're at 814 milliseconds. Now, if you have five or 10 videos, your, your page might literally take multiple seconds, you know, 20, 30 seconds. Here it says it finished in three seconds. So it's pulled in 2.9 megabytes of resources and they haven't even played the video yet. So I, what I want to do is to show you how to actually do an embed code that doesn't preload the video and allows your page to be super quick. So if I save this, I want you to now watch how long it takes. It took from start to finish 107 milliseconds to load the entire page. It's loaded 38 kilobytes of resources. You can see how much better this YouTube embed is than the one YouTube gives you, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, uh, I wanna go ahead and show you that I have written up a post on just my personal blog here that explains how to do this, and all the code is here. I've also shown you how I did it in Hugo Static Site Generator, which is the uh, static site generator I use to do my blog. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. As I mentioned here, I actually got this from CSS Tricks and he got it from somebody else, but I've made several modifications and that's kind of what I want to show you is some of those modifications. If I come in here back to my document, you now see I also have this little hover state and then you can play it and then it will go ahead and load the YouTube video and you can play it from here. All right, so let's go ahead and do this kind of from scratch. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and load back in this iframe because we're gonna use the iframe as the starting point. And I'm gonna go ahead and close down this network tab. We don't need to have that open right now. And I'm gonna, first of all, wrap everything inside of a div. And this div will basically control where this iframe is on the page and allow us to, as long as the div is wide, that's how big the, the YouTube video will be. And we'll make sure that we can cap it so it'll always stay the exact right dimensions um, no matter where it's at on our page. Next, I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna hard code a uh, styles right inside this div. Now you can, of course, uh, add a class and do it that way, but I'm just gonna do it here so that we can keep everything real close and tight and make this video short. All right, we're gonna set a width of 100% and then I'm gonna go ahead and cap the whole video to no larger than 500 pixels, uh, just so it stays kind of in the center of our screen here since that's how I've got it set up. Maybe I'll do like 550 pixels, something like that. Next, uh, because I do most of mine on a uh, white background, sometimes I'll have white as part of the thumbnail and to make sure it stands out no matter where I'm at. I like to do a box shadow when possible. So I'll do something like six pixels, uh, six pixels that's right and down. Then we're gonna have a blur of 10 and then we'll do HSL 206.5, 0%, which we could have just done zero, zero there. I guess this is just how I had it set up for my site and then 75%. And finally, I'm gonna do a margin of two rem to make sure that I've got space around it wherever it's at on the, on the, on the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and nothing should change, all right? Except you see, I've got this white border down here and there's probably one up top here. Now, it doesn't look like there is, um, but you can see I've got a, just a little bit of box shadow around there. Next, I'm gonna add another div here. And this div is important because it allows us to keep the aspect ratio the same kind of no matter what we do. So I'll come in here and add a style here, a position of a relative, and we'll do padding bottom of 56.15% and a height of zero with the overflow of hidden. Now you might be like, what in the world are we doing here? There's kind of this hack that people have used because to this point at least, aspect ratio is not in all of the browsers, although there is a spec for it. I don't actually think it's in a browser, it might be, um, but uh, it's not ready for production, even if it is like in Chrome or something like that. The next thing we wanna do is now we're gonna take this iframe, we're gonna kind of break it down into a few things. So when I save it already, you can see how this is starting to populate properly. It got rid of the, that white banding at the bottom, um, but everything looks uh, much better. So just for readability, let's go ahead and come in here to this iframe and break it down a bit. So we're gonna start the iframe there and then let's go ahead and add a style tag. And inside the style tag, we'll say position of absolute. Let's see, absolute. And then we'll do top zero, left zero. 
width of 100%, height of 100%, so it's always taking up as much room as the outer divs allow it to. And then we'll do a border of zero. That also means that we can get rid of this width and height att attribute right here, these two. And then let's break this source tag down here. And we've also got the title itself. We can change this to actually be the title we want it to be. So we could say like uh, coffee recipe JavaScript project. And then let's go ahead again, just for readability, I'll clean this up and be right back with you. Now we're gonna add two more things and this is kind of the magic. Uh, the first thing would be we're going to add loading equals lazy. Why not? So it won't even load in frame. The, the image itself, the placeholder itself won't load if it's not in, in view. And then finally, and here's kind of where that CSS tricks article was so helpful, although I've modified it some, you can use this SRC doc to actually populate styles and uh, an image itself to overlay. And that's what we're going to do here. So first of all, we want to add an actual style tag. And it'll actually add it in here as if it were like an, you know, an HTML document. So we're gonna come in here and say, first of all, we wanna say that, and we're just gonna write this CSS right in here. And we're gonna say we want padding to be zero, margin to be zero, overflow to be hidden. And then we're gonna grab the body of the document. Let's get a little more space here. And we're gonna grab both the body and let's see, let's grab the HTML too. Here we're gonna say height 100%. And then we're gonna grab our image, that'll be the image we pull in, and an SVG we're gonna use. And as I come in here, we're going to style this. So we'll say position, position of absolute, and then width of 100%, top zero, bottom zero, margin of auto. And then finally, let's just grab the SVG itself. We're gonna set a filter on this and it'll be a drop shadow filter, which will allow us to have a, an icon with some transparency and still get a really good shadow effect. We'll say one pixel to the right, one pixel down, 10 pixels uh, of blur, and then we'll do HSL of 206.5, 70.7%, and then 8%. Next, we wanna have a transition on this hover state that we're gonna add. So we're gonna say transition all 250 milliseconds uh, ease in and out. Now we want to hover over the body of the image itself. So we're going to say whenever we hover over the body, we want then to make some changes to this SVG. And all we're going to do is take this filter right here and update the values. So I'll come in here and say I want that to be 0% and this will be something more like 10%. In addition to the filter though, I also want to add one more thing. I want to add a transform scale of 1.2. That will allow the icon itself to kind of hover up and back when you hover over that. Okay, so we've got all that set. The style is now set. In this document, we also then want to add a link tag. You might see how this looks very familiar. And if we add a question mark and auto play of one, that should allow it to auto play after they've clicked on the image. So we've got this link tag and inside this link tag, I'm going to add an image tag and then we're gonna set our source element to https image.youtube.com. And this is how we're basically gonna grab the thumbnail that the YouTuber has put up. So we'll add that same code in there that we grabbed earlier, so the actual video. And then we'll add hqdefault.jpg Hey, Chris from the future here. I just realized that you may want something a little more high def than this thumbnail. It kind of depends on how large the video is gonna show on your site. So there are actually several different uh, levels of thumbnails that YouTube produces when you upload a thumbnail image or use one from your video. And so I'll put those up here, but the biggest one is max res default. And uh, if you use that, it'll give you the 1280 pixels wide version of the thumbnail, which should be big enough for whatever you're doing. All right. Back to what you were doing. Then we'll add an alt tag, and that alt tag will be our same as we had below. So coffee, recipe, JavaScript, project, and we'll close out our image tag. And then finally, I'm gonna go ahead and copy in an SVG that I got from feathericons.com. It's free, and I've done a video before on uh, those, and so if you're interested in that, I'll add it in the description. But it's a free icon, and when I save here, 
you'll now see that everything populates just as I'd expect. I've got this SVG that I pulled in, and when I hover over it, we get that little hover state anywhere when I hover anywhere over the body of this SRC dock. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to manually type this out every time. So however you build your site, you're going to want to find a way to programmatically do this, where all you do is have variables for perhaps the alt tags, and then the YouTube embed code. And if you just do that, then basically anywhere you add a video on your site, this will be the response instead of the massive YouTube embed that normally happens when somebody visits any of your pages. Hopefully that was helpful for you. I'll have links in the description to the code itself so you don't have to manually type this out. Um, but I hope that was a big help to you as you build out your better YouTube embeds. Thanks so much for watching and happy coding.